Hey everybody, welcome to a new episode of Fall Guys! Not only a new episode of Fall Guys, but a new account. That's right, I am playing on a fresh account this episode. So you remember in the last episode, I uh, did the new Hexathon event and unlocked the fish outfit. In this episode, I'm going to do that again, <laughs> but on a fresh account. And we're going to see what happens. Here we have the first of many bot accounts. You can tell it's a bot account because even though I'm a PC player, it still has the PC symbol above its head. If you play on new accounts and you play solo mode, a lot of your opponents will actually be bot accounts like that. When you start out on Fool Guys with a, a new account, the game will only put you in solo mode, if you play solo mode, against bot accounts and other new players. In theory. Uh, if you see this incredibly fast Santa here, and me as well of course, you'll uh, realise that that is only theory because there are ways to get to this without a new account. Okay, let's have a look at some of these bots. Let's see how they behave and what they do. Interesting. Now I'd heard about this from a few people before, but I hadn't seen it in action myself. But the bots are actually programmed to lose. <laughs> and so am I, as you just saw there. But that Santa was very suspicious, as is this bean on my right. Why are they so good at the game? Why are they so fast? But they're not a new bean. I mean, that outfit... That's not a new outfit. So why is this person in the <laughs> noob tier of matchmaking? Like, they're better than me. They're faster, they've done better. I haven't really messed up on this level particularly. But you know who has messed up? The bot accounts. Let's take another look here and see how they've actually been... I don't know if it's intentional, or if it's just uh, a lack of how they've been programmed, but they purposefully lose. Check it out. They also don't have auto-grab on, which uh, a lot of new players do actually have. So these, these accounts are just running straight off the map. Another way you can easily tell, if perhaps you're not a PC player, is uh, in solo mode. These accounts will all be wearing a random assortment of original Series 1 cosmetics. So we see a lot of parrots, a lot of dinosaurs. This this poor bot is really struggling. I don't think they're going to do too well here, do you? No. So that takes us to a final. Now I do need to get one solo win to get this fish account, but sadly this guy, who is clearly not a new player, gets the win from that one. So I've lost two of these solo rounds so far. It's not going great. But hey, it doesn't look like there's a super skilled person in this lobby, because I managed to get first place. Is the bot gonna make it? No. Unlucky. Okay, into the next round, and it's Dizzy Heights! And uh, I'm still using all my tech and knowledge, and that's left all the other new players in the dust. Is this fair? No. Do I apologise? Yes. But I really wanted to see what actually happens in these uh, new player lobbies, and uh, the results are strange. <laughs> these bot accounts are so interesting to watch. They also have random name tags as well, and they can even have ones which aren't actually publicly available. But anyway, we managed to get through the next few levels and make it to a hexaterrestrial final. And I just won. I'm really sorry other new players, but uh, that'll be the last of me playing against the new ones. Because next... Oh look, it was a four gold. Big surprises there. Next, we did the Hexathon finals here, which we're just against any player. There's no matchmaking in this at all. So this should be fine and easy. Well, it should in theory be harder than the solo mode, but as you saw there, somehow some very skilled players had managed to sneak into the low levels. And uh, that's entirely possible, because matchmaking is not infallible. <laughs> Good choice of word there, being uh, one of the achievements you can get in this game. Am I gonna win? Oh, it came down to the wire there, but that's our first Hexathon win. As you can see here, I do need to get another one though. So we do it, and here is Hexagon. I'm dressed up as a Christmas tree. I've had this new account um, for a little bit, not that long. So I managed to get a couple of the free costumes on it, which I'm pleased for. But now I'm hoping that I can get the fish again. I know, some of you will probably be calling me uh, a something for wanting to do this event twice. When uh, a lot of people struggle to do it once. 
But you have to remember, I'm also gonna still have to play duos and squads, and with any luck, my fresh account here will be able to help some other beans also unlock their fish costume. So even though I might have stolen one win from uh, the solo people, I'll be helping some others get a win as well. Next round here is Whirly Gig, and we're in duos, and my teammate is dressed up as something from Doom. And we have a threat here. I always like to play in this way. Our Squidward is a threat. Whenever I play duos or squads, or even solo really, if there's someone that qualifies in front of me or shows some obvious signs of being good, then uh, I will try and keep an eye on them and their teammate. Now this Squidward is consistently doing very well. Now if you see the black bean with the red pincers, that is the Squidward's teammate here. So they're both, they're doing pretty good. So I need to uh, keep it in mind that if my teammate and I are going to win this duos, that's probably going to be the team that I have to take out. Luckily here I managed to get in front of the Squidward. I'm pretty good at puzzle path sometimes, uh, but in solo mode with high skill based matchmaking it can be tough. But we managed to get first place this time, which is very lucky because it uh, doesn't seem to quite understand how the uh, level works here, which is unfortunate. So they do get timed out, but because I got first place, we still managed to qualify! And now here, as you remember, I was saying this is the Squidward team teammate. This guy with the pincers. <laughs> so I'm really trying to take them out by pushing them down the slime into the water. Will it work? Will it knock them out of this round? Poor guy is really struggling here. Oh, but they managed to get out into relative safety. So I try throwing them off with a blast ball, but I throw it right next to them and it doesn't really do much. So unfortunately, both teams make it through to a blast ball final. Gotta love it, right? So, as always, I take a bit of time at the beginning to just kind of stay safe and keep an eye on our nemesis team, Squidward and Pincer Boy. I decide to give Squidward a few little choice grabs here and uh, inadvertently managed to launch Squidward into a ball straight off the map. Not entirely intentional, but uh, I will happily take that one. Which is good, because then my teammate gets launched off the map, and there's still three opponents, including the Pincer Bean, my arch nemesis and rival, but only for a matter of seconds, as they're also gone. Perfect. Now, are the last two remaining people on the team? It's possible, but I haven't actually been keeping track of the other teams. Looks like it's a no, unless they like to friendly fire each other. So it's just me and someone who's uh, completed the season pass here. Which can be a frightening sign. They also appear to not really get affected by explosions. Now, some of you might know, I've said this in a few occasions, Blast Ball is not my strongest final. But when it gets to the point, the point of uh, just being two players, my chances significantly increase. And we managed to get that duo's win. Hope you're proud of me, teammate. And uh, hopefully that helps you to unlock the top half of that fish costume, as you clearly got the bottom half already. Wonderful. We're now in the traditional conventional squads mode. Squads mode is harder to carry in, but it looks like I won't have to worry about that. My team's doing really strong here, as they're leading the pack in pretty much each round. One of them is missing, I don't know where their last teammate is. Definitely a team with some potential. We have a crustacean warrior, someone with the uh, samurai outfit from previous season pass, and we have someone with captain redshift and a gold dress on our team this time, which is ideal. Unfortunately then we get my least favorite level, stumping ground, and the rhinos decide to absolutely massacre me and push me off the edge of the map. But we managed to make it through, so it's all fine. And it's another Blast Ball final. Now after that previous win in duos, and quite a strong looking team here, honestly, my confidence is fairly high for this final. And rightly so, as we actually start to very rapidly take out the other players. You better watch who you grab there, Spongebob. Wait a second. Is that person AFK? <laughs> they look like they were. <laughs> I almost get knocked off myself. But somehow, our whole team is alive. And our only opponent is Spongebob. How has this happened? I have no idea. Now I'm a bit wary to uh, knock off my own teammates. 
because it's still risky. But can we just get SpongeBob without killing our own teammates? Of course we can. And look, that's it. No other bean survives. What a strong and genuinely random team that I joined squads with. And then we have a bit of fun with the blast balls. And win the game. So that's the squad's win. Awesome. What an absolutely legendary squad. But we've still got a little bit more to go to unlock that fish. Let's see, what's remaining now? We need to reach the final in duos. Which means we might be able to get another duos win. You never know. So here we are in Puzzle Path. And my teammate actually, ironically, already has the fish outfit. And a gold dress. Take note that there's a 2B quite close behind me, so they're obviously going to be a potential threat in later rounds. That's how I play it, and it helps me to know who the threats are. And that's another first place on Puzzle Path. Now, pay attention to this horrible opponent who decides to uh, almost sacrifice themselves just to grab me. So that's a new threat to keep an eye on. Or just a, a bit of karma for me to try and get back. So that person is uh, using the Assassin's Creed costume that I think was in the previous season pass. So I must stop at nothing to try taking them out. Here they are on yellow team, already with the penguin. Little do they know that if you're jumping with a, gra uh, with a penguin and someone grabs you, they will automatically full pop you and launch the penguin away. Now jumping can still be useful at some points in this map, but if you're jumping and someone grabs you, you're going to instantly lose the penguin. So you have a few other options. You can either keep holding on to the penguin to maybe get another point or two before you lose it, or you can drop the penguin as soon as someone's about to grab you and uh, pick it up again. Luckily this time, it seemed that there wasn't really too many other players coming after me and my penguin, and I managed to just stay away from them without too much trouble. Change direction quickly, jump off platforms to change your momentum, and you too can carry that penguin around. Next it puts us into another team game. We get Jinx, and uh, this doesn't happen to me often. I actually get the Jinx straight away from spawn, which I'm quite happy with, because it means I can put in some work and hopefully get this finished quickly. Oh look, it's my nemesis, the person who grabbed me in the previous rounds. Quickly jinxed. Unfortunately, both teams are tied. One player remaining on each team. Can we catch up to this guy? Oh, maybe I'll go this way. See if I can... Oh, okay, there we go. Oh, one of our teammates manages to catch up to them there. And we go into a final, a 2v2, but what will it be? Oh, it's one of the rarest of drops. It's a full ball final round. Now this one can be a, a bit hit or miss, so to speak. A bit of a coin flip. But we know that my random teammate does have that fish costume. They've got some skill behind them. They know what they're doing. Is it worth going in goal when it's just a 2v2? Honestly, not really. It almost seems like it's worth it more to just try and score as frequently as possible because it's going to be so difficult for them to actually block these. It's working out pretty well so far. I decide to still try and hold back, because the faster a ball is hit towards you, the faster you'll hit it back. It's a bit weird, but the, the momentum of the balls in full ball kind of works like that. If someone just very slowly pushes a ball towards you, you'll hit it back slowly as well. But if it's got a lot of momentum and acceleration, you'll hit it back with even more on occasion, which is what can sometimes cause the balls to just absolutely launch around the map. I was having some trouble getting this one in the goal, but eventually it manages to bounce off things. And with only 18 seconds to go, and <laughs> quite a big score lead, it looks like we've probably got this one in the bag. Yep, we managed to get another one over this guy's head. He's putting in the effort, but uh, sadly it wasn't enough for their team. We take another victory. Absolute joy. Five goals. Now, this random teammate might not have needed the fish, but I'm sure they'll appreciate another duo's win. 
So there we go, that's all our duos finals. But weirdly enough, we still need a few more hexathons because <laughs> we actually have to survive. And look, that was almost a full gold. It's just a full ball. You need a 10 goal lead, I think, to get a golden full ball, which is uh, very unlikely. And that brings us up to 12 whole crowns. I'm so proud. So we've got the uh, the fishkin bottom here, and this hexathon. And uh, all I need to do, I don't even need to technically win this, so it's kind of rude for me to win this, because this guy might need the fish himself. Uh, I just need to survive, I think it was, what, 60 seconds in rounds in hexagon, which can sometimes be harder than getting to the final, because people disappear quite quick. That's another win. Now we're on to Hexagon itself. I've got a bunch of tiles, as you can see. I've been doing work in this round. I managed to cut off a few people and uh, secure a lot of tiles for myself. And there's only one person, and they've fallen in. I still have plenty to go. A lovely win. Which means we're into our final round of the episode, I think. Yep, this is the last one. Oh, it's looking very close here. I have to make a slightly longer jump towards the middle and try and cut off this nutcracker. Let's see if I can secure another win for the fish. Again, I don't technically need a win here. Um, I'm just inadvertently increasing the fish outfit's rarity by uh, taking a crown from someone else. I can only apologize for that, but I did survive for as long as I needed. Wow, 15 crowns. And that gives us the full fish outfit. Once again, the pike achieved. And uh, that's a little taster into what it's like to play on a new account. Weird bot happenings, very skilled players in the lowest bracket of skill-based matchmaking, and uh, a few wins. But I managed to help a few people in team uh, duos and squads, so hopefully you appreciate that. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Like if you liked this one, and subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you in another video or a live stream soon. Goodbye.